The good news that we have proclaimed for this Advent Christmas season ends with a second chapter of Luke that starts, When the time came. Indeed, the time has come for us to move from the narrative of birthing to the narrative of redemption. The story of Jesus' ritual cleansing as a child contains stories of people who had been waiting for this moment. But the time of waiting is over for us too. Like Isaiah who says, for Zion's sake, I won't stay silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still. We will not stop our songs of resistance until justice shines out like a light for all. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we have caught throughout this season of Advent and Christmas of your gifts of hope, love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we have not been sure of tomorrow, you have ignited the light within us, and we have glowed with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us continue to proclaim far and wide that the time has come for light to be among all people. Amen. Throughout the Advent season, we have been adding more and more light to our Advent wreath as we waited to celebrate the light of the world being born. If you added to your at-home Advent wreath, I'd love for you to take a picture and email it or text it to me. Even though we've been physically apart this season, it has been so comforting to know that our church family has been sharing in this common ritual action, united by the light of Christ each week as we've worshiped. I surely rejoice in the Lord. My heart is joyful because of my God because he has clothed me with clothes of victory, wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom in a priestly crown. 
and like a bride adorned in jewelry. As the earth puts out its growth, and as a garden grow its seeds, so the Lord God will grow righteousness and praise before all the nations. For Zion's sake I won't keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I won't sit still, until her righteousness shines out like a light, and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory, you will be called by a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. You will be a splendid garland in the Lord's hand, a royal turban in the palm of God's hand. When the time came for their ritual cleansing, in accordance with the law from Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It's written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that generates opposition, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshipped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had completed everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown, Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. In our reading from Luke, we shift from the story of Jesus' birth to the story of our redemption. When the time came is what marks that transition. The light was born into the world. God's love had been incarnated. The one who embodied hope, love, joy, and peace made a home among us. As Mary and Joseph make their way to Jerusalem, to lift up their son to God, to mark him and name him, to bring a humble offering of turtle doves and pigeons as generations had done before. They are amazed at what unfolds before their very eyes as God continues to reveal who that bundle of joy they embrace really is. We find in this story the devout Simeon and Anna, the great prophet, ones who had been waiting a lifetime for their Savior to come. And now the waiting is over. The light has dawned. Simeon beholds in the Christ child a light for all peoples. Anna has met redemption and is bursting with this good news. The time has come. The wait is over. Throughout all the scriptures, we see the many ways in which God's redeeming love unfolds from generation to generation. 
And we've followed each week of Advent, God's saving work revealed through the prophet Isaiah. More than any other Hebrew scripture, Isaiah is quoted and referenced in the New Testament again and again. It sheds light on what God is doing in Christ. And no wonder, because the story of Isaiah is so powerful and life-giving. We have journeyed with these ancient peoples through the absolute devastation and destruction they faced as Jerusalem fell, through their exile in a distant land removed from their sacred place of worship and their homes, to this moment we heard today, with all the hope and promise of new life springing forth. The prophet proclaims that the day of restoration is coming when Jerusalem will shine out for all the world to see like a blazing torch. God's salvation had come and the joy with which the prophet sang reverberated throughout history. I can imagine Simeon and Anna remembering all the hope and promise they heard in Isaiah that good news ringing in their hearts as they reached out to touch salvation and hold it in their arms. From exile to homecoming, from ruins to rebuilding, from sorrow to joy, no wonder the prophet can't keep silent. After years of eager anticipation, of long days of waiting and hoping, Simeon can finally rest in peace. From a lifetime of mourning, of fasting and prayer, to uncontainable praise, Anna proclaims to all she meets that redemption has arrived. The wait is over. The time has come. In this tiny baby whose birth we celebrated this week was all that the people had hoped and dreamed for. In him was the promise and possibility of new life, of transformation, of God's saving grace. That tiny baby grows with wisdom and strength as he prepares to be about God's redeeming work. Jesus turns, of course, to the prophet Isaiah as he begins his public ministry. Go back this week and read the beginning of Isaiah 61 and compare it to Luke 4 as Jesus lays out a roadmap for what is ahead. His would be a ministry of healing and feeding, of freeing captives and lifting up the poor because he came to serve. The work of salvation and redemption that he was about was not only about the life hereafter, but it was so much about the life here and now. The time had come. The wait was over. God's kingdom was being built on earth as it was in heaven. On this Sunday after Christmas, we remember that Christmas was just the beginning. Now is the time when we roll up our sleeves and get to work. Having rested in all the hope, love, joy, and peace of this season, the time has come and the waiting is over. The Savior of the world has called us to carry on with his work. One of my favorite poems ever captures our now what? As we begin to pack up our decorations and unhang the greens, as we put away all those sights and sounds of Christmas for next year. It's the work of Christmas by the great theologian Howard Thurman. I think I've shared this every Christmas season I've been at Zion and I'm sharing it again. In it, we find those echoes of Isaiah and witness the life and ministry of Christ. We hear our call to carry on with Christ's work. Here's the work of Christmas by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, 
the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Friends, the time has come. The wait is over. We live and embody the Christmas story, the story of God's redemption, every time we do the work of Christ and serve others. Zion folks, do you remember that last Sunday we were all together before Indianapolis went into lockdown? It was one of our service days. After we worshiped together and sang together and ate together, we had 28 volunteers who put together 201 food survival kits for Horizon House to feed our hungry neighbors facing homelessness. And we wrapped 1,530 packs of crayons for Riley Children's Hospital, which comes out to 6,120 crayons in total so we could bring some healing comfort to kids facing big and scary things. I've thought back to that day so many times. As I reflect back on what 2020 has been, I am so touched by the ways we have continued to serve in spite of these most challenging of circumstances. We have fed our neighbors facing food insecurity we have helped teachers change and adapt their classrooms for social distancing and gotten supplies for students so they didn't have to worry about having the basics as they headed into this uncertain school year. One of our youth led us in an effort to offer love and care to God's creation by supporting our local humane society. And just this last weekend, we gathered hats, scarves, gloves, and blankets so that our neighbors facing homelessness can try to keep warm and safe throughout the winter ahead. We've prayed for our partners in Sri Lanka and ones serving through Global Ministries, and they have held us in prayer too. We've studied together and grown in our faith. We've made music and sung praises to God. We've helped keep hope alive in each other, and we have let our lights shine. Even with this pandemic raging on, we have found ways to be about the work of Christmas, the work of God's redemption this whole year. I'm looking to 2021 with hope. This year that has stretched us and challenged us and tried us has proven to me what I knew all along. Here at Zion, the love and care that we have has helped change the world and will continue to help change the world as we live out the good news of Jesus Christ and carry on with his work. In just a few weeks, we are going to be gathering by Zoom and by phone, to listen carefully for God's call to us, to discern the specific work that we are to be about. As we begin our visioning process, the Holy Spirit will help guide us as we determine our mission priorities for the years ahead so that we can focus our ministry and make the greatest impact in serving our neighbors. I'm so excited for this and have been eagerly anticipating these conversations so that we can dream God's dream for us together. The time has come. The wait is over. Roll up your sleeves and ready your hearts. We have been called to serve. And now it's time to get to work. It's time to do the work of Christmas. Let us give thanks to God for this wondrous calling. Amen. As the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, 
So will God cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. With thankful hearts, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Friends, I invite you in these moments to consider what it is that you can bring to God this day and in the days to come. You can make your offerings by donating through our website at zionuccindy.net slash donate, or you can send in a check to our office. We continue to check the mail regularly. Whatever gifts you have to bring this day, I invite you to take some time to reflect on those as we listen to Little Drummer Boy. I'm so incredibly grateful for the generosity of our members and friends through the gifts that you bring each and every week. We have been called to serve God together, to love our neighbors together, to do the work of Christmas together, and it is through your generosity that our ministry is able to continue on as we seek to answer God's call for our lives. So let us lift up these gifts to God in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the light of the world, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received adoption as your children. With Jesus, our brother, we dedicate ourselves in ministry to the world. 
that we may live as heirs of your promises to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. This carol was written in 1962 by Noel Regney and Gloria Shane at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Inspired by seeing babies pushed in strollers in New York City while the dire threat of nuclear war roamed, loomed, Noel wrote, Said the night wind to the little lamb, and pray for peace, people everywhere. The star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite can be interpreted as the star of Bethlehem, but also what a nuclear missile looks like in flight. The composer said in an interview later that it was difficult to actually sing the song that year without crying. Indeed, our prayers for peace continue, and the need to protect the children of the world and secure a future for them are as dire as ever. As the last song in our series, let us sing this carol of Christmas work, a song high above the trees with our voices big as the sea. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, 
but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that we believe that good will prevail, fill the night left by sadness with light. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that goodness alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat with me, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen.